In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at our regularly scheduled weather forecast for the next 10 to 15 days where we do have major storms on the way that we're going to be discussing as well as big temperature flips. Also, at the end of this video, we will be discussing the solar eclipse forecast as far as cloud cover. So stay tuned for that if you are interested in that. I have waited quite a while to do this because I find cloud cover to be very, very difficult to forecast, and I find that it fluctuates very, very often. So we're going to be doing our best to estimate what that could look like, but we will be updating it over the coming days uh, as changes occur so we can kind of break down the trends and what things are looking like every single day until it basically happens. So keep that in mind. Let's walk through things as we take a look at later on this evening, because thankfully this video actually is coming out at a proper time. I'm very happy about that. Later on today, we do have this low taking place over Nebraska. Severe thunderstorms out to the east of this uh, for eastern Nebraska, eastern Kansas, and eastern Oklahoma, where thunderstorm possibilities will be there and some severe weather possibilities as well. We have snowfall occurring for a lot of the Rockies, including Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and down through Colorado. For some reason, I feel like I already said Colorado, so I may have said that twice, but those states right there are seeing some heavier snowfall. We are seeing our eastern low come to an end as well, but rather uneventful by this point. Let's go ahead and jump towards tomorrow afternoon. And again, this is this low we've been talking about, 996 over eastern Nebraska. Uh, we see this cold front now stretching very far, and it's out way ahead of this low. I've been talking about this for days now. This will eventually break up the low, uh, I don't think by this is the reason why that low is going to break up, but it's going to basically break up. This cold front is going to get too far away from the low pressure system. It's not really going to have that support that it needs to stay uh, very vigorous. But what we're going to see is that it's basically going to all flatten down horizontally for the deeper south areas, and it will continue to bring thunderstorms for days here and potential severe weather. So we'll watch this as it occurs. Let's move towards Monday, and we already kind of see that happening. The low has basically dissipated over the north central states. We have snow showers for some of the Rockies and Plains. Surrounding regions seeing rainfall showers, but rather light and sporadic. Most of our activity is where this cold front used to be. Don't know why that just got so huge, so let's do this real quick. Uh, we see that this area is dealing with severe weather and thunderstorms, especially Texas, Louisiana, southern Arkansas, into Mississippi, northern Alabama, areas of Tennessee, and maybe even Georgia there, seeing thunderstorm activity and some severe weather activity there for Monday on the 8th. By the time we reach Tuesday on the 9th here, keep in mind that was our solar eclipse day, but we'll take a look at the cloud cover in a minute. We see a low forming along this, uh, rather weak at this point, 1004, but it is there over kind of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We would be watching primarily for severe weather underneath this low, uh, with some chances for thunderstorms and showers to the west and east of that low. Jet stream remains rather flat, so we won't touch on it too much until we see any sort of severe uh, kind of troughing or ridging going on. Let's take this towards Wednesday. Um, and as we can see, this really just expands. We have a 999 over Louisiana now. Rising thunderstorms and severe weather chances here out ahead of things. Keep that in mind. And then a lot of thunderstorm and shower chances kind of just surrounding the entire area. We've talked about this for a couple of days now, but this looks very summer-like where half the nation is seeing a chance at isolated and scattered thunderstorms. And it makes sense, you know, we are reaching towards later into the spring, heading towards the summer so slowly but surely. We're not nearly there yet, but we are starting to see some impacts due to that. And things are looking a little bit more like, you know, mid-spring now. The worst area for thunderstorms on this specific frame would be this pocket, mostly in southern Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama there. By the time we reach towards Thursday on the 11th, again, our low is a 993 here over Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio, um, and we have sort of a frontal boundary going on here. We have a lot of rising storms occurring across the eastern seaboard, and I would say the worst area for thunderstorms on this particular frame is this southeast pocket. So you take kind of central Virginia down through central and western North Carolina, most of South Carolina, eastern Georgia, and then areas here in northern Florida seeing some of the worst thunderstorms for Thursday on April 11th. Keep in mind things can change a little bit, but uh, I do expect that to be the case. We do have a ridge ongoing for the west, trough trying to dig down for the central states, and then yet another ridge along the eastern seaboard. 
So not only do we expect thunderstorm chances, but expect a lot of warmth surging up the east coast kind of in this direction. Should make for a rather stormy, but also mild day as far as temperatures are concerned. Keep in mind also this is a relatively strong low at 993, so a fairly impactful one near uh, Louisville, Kentucky there. Let's move towards Friday here on April 12th, and what we see is a 986 millibar low pressure center, so still uh, intensifying here over eastern Canada. We have a secondary low near the Carolina coast, 1002 there, and overall a lot of thunderstorm chances, some severe weather chances, and overall a lot of rainfall happening due to this area of low pressure now. We see cold air in a very narrow band actually moving pretty far southward. This is one of the more narrow troughs I've ever seen. It's deep digging, but look at how narrow that area of cold air is, impacting mostly exclusively the Great Lakes and some of the Ohio Valley as well as the upper Midwest. Very unique uh, trough there to say the least. Still rather warm along, uh, especially the northeast coast, but also most of the east coast by this point. But everything is moving eastward, so expect a cool down after this point. And we still have a semi-ridge pattern out west, although there is storminess and cold air trying to move in through the northwest, bringing some snowfall and rainfall to these areas. Let's take this towards Saturday and see this all kind of occur again. Everything kind of moves eastward. So we see this ridge moving towards the east, now over the upper Midwest and plains. This trough still very narrow, impacting portions of the Mid-Atlantic as well as some of the northeast and southeast, but again, still very, very narrow in the areas that it's mostly impacting. And then this trough for the northwest is expanding and becoming more potent. So overall, your jet stream by this point looks something like uh, this, uh, with this low still over New England, now the primary low to the south actually, with a secondary low to the north. So primary low is this underlined one. And this is kind of just keeping everything warmer until that can move out. Uh, by the time we reach Sunday, though, we see that that narrow trough moves out very quickly because it's not taking up very much space. It doesn't take a long time for that to move out. And we actually see a very large ridge look to return to the east here by Sunday the 14th. This particular pattern, pattern we were speaking about a very narrow trough. This is a very wide ridge. It's stretching all the way from the northern plains all the way across to almost the entire northeast. So expect almost everywhere underneath this line to be above average temperatures. Return of that warm to even hot weather for some areas there. Um, over the northwest, we have this expanding trough still. Major snowfall all the way from the Cascades down through the central Rockies happening. And we do have a 991 over the upper Midwest. And I think that there could be some thunderstorm and severe weather chances with this one. Uh, but that might be a little limited if that cold front doesn't develop. And it does eventually. It's a little separated. You can see this 997 here with a little bit of a stretching cold front here. 1004 along it should help to have higher precipitation along this area over kind of the central Midwest and central plains there. Um, and we have a lot of cold air working its way in behind it, as well as warmer air surging to the north out ahead of it. So this should be a pretty decent severe weather setup. I think the lower amounts of convection would be the biggest problem here, but I would expect to see thunderstorms in this area and maybe even, you know, this entire area here surrounding that secondary low. As we move towards Tuesday, we see that this cold front actually gets more and more intense. The low isn't that strong anymore, but this cold front is a lot more convective by this point. It has a lot of moisture moving in, a lot of warmth from the south here, from the Gulf of Mexico, moving into that cold front. And it does have a lot of potent cold air trying to move in behind it. So I expect a lot of instability with this one to be possible and a lot of thunderstorms and severe weather to be possible along that frontal boundary. So we'll be watching for that. Let's move into the GFS model and see where we get agreement and disagreement. Uh, we see that low take place almost the same. Same thing with the second one. We even get the secondary low in the same place. Again, eventually impacting the southeast. We get a wider trough than what the European model showed, but still... Compared to most, it is more narrow than typical, but this is a little bit more traditional looking to me than what the European model had to say. And this one would likely be a little bit harder to knock out. You see it lingering a little bit into Saturday. That warm-up does very vigorously move in, though, by this point as we move through Sunday into Monday, 14th into 15th. We have a very strong low over Minnesota, clear defined cold front here, and a clear defined warm front out ahead of it. So we would have warm air surging out ahead of that cold front, which is one of the ingredients for major severe weather events. And we have the cold air 
wrapping itself underneath that low and trying to move in behind that cold front, which is kind of ingredient number two. I would say ingredient number one is just having that low pressure system and cold front in the first place. The other two ingredients following it is that warm air out ahead of things, the cold air behind it, and this certainly sets up for a pretty major storm compared to the European model. So no surprise that after kind of the five to seven day mark, we do have some disagreement here. The GFS model would have a lot more action than what we just saw in the European model, even for eventually the East Coast, as you can see, where another low tries to form. Take this with a grain of salt, by the way, guys. 990 over West Virginia, potent Arctic air diving southward, and potentially a snowstorm for the Ohio Valley for April 17th into 18th. Is it impossible? I don't think anything's impossible in weather. Is it likely? Not at all. Keep that in mind, but we will still push forward. 982 now creating a widespread major snowstorm for the Ohio Valley, even impacting portions of the Mid-Atlantic. Very far-fetched. Even this amount of cold air moving in is far-fetched for uh, kind of the mid to late April mark, so keep that in mind. It's all made possible on this particular model by a very strong ridge out west, which forces all the Arctic air to move eastward. I still just think things look a little too potent here for the time of year in mind. Also, we would be seeing thunderstorms and severe weather out ahead of things likely, so this would be a massively impactful storm if this model was correct, which I don't think it's going to be. Keep that in mind. Uh, overall, we move into a much more spring-like pattern afterwards, although the Northeast just really, really struggles to kind of shake off the cold weather here uh, as this trough just wants to keep recycling and staying in place. So this would be a little bit of a depressing pattern for the Northeast, I would say. Let's take a look at the total precipitation. No surprise, the Northwest seeing a little bit more as that trough wants to bring in some storms to this area. Southwest, nearly no precipitation. And then starting in the South Central States, all the way up the Eastern Seaboard here and even into Canada, we have an above average activity area as we have a couple of pretty massive storms either bringing cold fronts through this area or lows directly over it. So that is the reasoning for this above average activity. And that all kind of originates from these very vigorous and frequent temperature changes. Again, the warm air moving in and then the cold air swinging through it is going to create uh, instability. It's going to create storms and it's going to bring this precipitation. So until we get a very stable pattern where the air masses are staying in place, expect the activity to be on the upswing like this. Total snowfall in the European model, I agree with heavily. Uh, a lot of snowfall for the Cascades and Rockies. Nearly none for the Sierra Nevada for the first time in like probably six months. And then pretty much none for the East here. I strongly agree with this. Let's see what the GFS model has to say. It has the Northern Plains on upper Midwest getting some snowfall, which isn't that far-fetched. So fine, we'll just, we'll just deal with that. That's okay. But this right here is where the problems come. I, I think that this is again, very far-fetched, very unlikely to happen. But regardless, we will show it and make you guys aware of what the models are calling for regardless. Because, hey, I think one thing, a model showing it, it is possible and you deserve to know that it is p possible, technically. Even if it's under 1%, it is technically possible. Uh, very, very unlikely, though. Now, the temperature pattern, again, we have these big swings going on, cold air masses, warm air masses, and it, I could break it down day by day, but really the only thing you need to know because we've really broken down the, the temperature pattern is that everything's moving very quickly from west to east, as you can see, day over day, and that's where a lot of your instability comes from. And don't expect to see any consistency as far as temperatures anywhere in the nation, really. It's going to be a lot of three days of warmth three days of cold, three days of warmth, three days of cold, over and over and over again here. It's not going to be like one day warm, one day cold, one day hot, one day freezing. It's not going to be that explosive with the changes, but expect, you know, two to three days of a certain air mass or temperature pattern, and then expect a switch to come through. Now, the eclipse forecast, I mean, here is our current uh, model guidance as far as uh, the cloud cover. Um, and, you know, I don't want to put the path of totality in here. If you're traveling to somewhere or you live somewhere, you know whether you're under it or not. Um, now, we do expect a lot of cloudiness for this area, or should I say uh, this area here, which is most of the areas that are going to be seeing either uh, the total solar eclipse or, you know, a very large amount of it. 
Um, the best areas is going to be... Okay, we're getting big here again with the drawing. The bit, the best areas, in my opinion, is going to be here over uh, the kind of Midwest into the Great Lakes. Also the Northeast, where they are getting the path of totality right over them. Uh, these are the two clearest areas that I see here. The blues are going to be clear, by the way. The whites are going to be cloudy. I'm sure you could have picked up on that, but still... Uh, and also the southeast kind of into the mid-Atlantic, although not seeing a path of totality, they could have a clearing there where you can definitely uh, see pretty well. So it's pretty disappointing. And, you know, I've been kind of responding to some comments and letting you guys know I think it's going to be very cloudy for a majority of folks. Um, but it, unfortunately, the east and the central states in general... I would say this is about 85%, you know, maybe between 75 and 85% cloud cover for most areas. And that is very disappointing, uh, but that's just what it is. Again, though, the cloud cover is very, very hard to forecast, and I do expect some shifts and changes. So we will show this every day and go over it. Also, the National Weather Service has been putting out outlooks daily, kind of showing the same thing, but they do have the path of totality kind of over top of this, over layered. So I encourage you to look at that if you are curious where all of this kind of relates to that. Um, I think that's a really good resource that you guys can look into. You can either go to the website or look at their Twitter. I'm sure they're tweeting it. Um, and that's going to give you guys a really, really great idea um, of what things look like. Kind of like this, but it has a little bit more information overlaying it. Um, I usually speak to the entire nation, so I just want to kind of give everybody an idea because I know that it's not just the path of totality that's curious about it. It's kind of everybody. So I wanted to give the big picture outlook here. Anyway, if you guys have any questions regarding this and you want me to touch on anything more specific than this regarding that eclipse, let me know and we will be sure to go over it with you guys over the coming days. I know there's only about two days left, one, one two days left. So there's still a little bit of time to so leave some comments down below if you want anything in addition to this. Anyway, be sure to subscribe. We do make weather forecasts here just like this one every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.